It has been called one of the largest kleptocracy cases in the world. A brazen fraud scheme that tainted the top levels of Malaysia's government. At the centre was One Malaysia Development Berhad, or 1MDB, a Malaysian state investment fund. Chaired by then Prime Minister Najib Razak, the fund was created in 2009 to finance economic development projects. With the help of financier Joe Lowe and Wall Street bank Goldman Sachs, 1MDB raised billions of dollars in bonds. But instead of forging partnerships and advancing growth for the country, Najib, Lowe and other associates allegedly stole four and a half billion US dollars from 1MDB over several years. When the fraud was uncovered in 2015, it sparked massive protests in Malaysia. Everyone's come out here today is because of one issue. The government is too rotten. And the people coming here is actually just request the government to be clean. For a time, it seemed like changes had been set in motion. Najib fell from grace and his Barisan National Coalition was voted out. Politicians across the spectrum pledged to clean up the government. But since then, observers say the anti-corruption momentum has stalled with far-reaching political consequences. The issues of corruption and anti-corruption have not gone away, and 1MDB foreshadows them. So where are we now? While 1MDB was a Malaysian fund, the stolen money was laundered through the global financial system. Investigations are ongoing in at least six jurisdictions, including Malaysia, the US, Singapore and Switzerland. The money was allegedly funneled into shell companies and paid as bribes and kickbacks. Millions were also used to buy luxury property, a super yacht, a private jet and fine art as well as to finance the Hollywood film The Wolf of Wall Street and other projects meant to boost Najib's popularity. In Malaysia, five separate court cases have been brought against Najib over 1MDB's mismanagement. The charges range from abuse of power to money laundering and criminal breach of trust. Najib has consistently denied any wrongdoing. A raid of his home turned up heaps of cash, jewellery, gold bars and luxury goods belonging to Najib and his wife, Rosma Mansour, who was also jailed for bribery in a separate case. Najib was found guilty in the first case and is currently serving a 12-year prison sentence. But he was acquitted in the second case and his three remaining cases are still in progress. Meanwhile, Najib has sought a royal pardon in a last-ditch attempt to get out of jail. Despite his conviction, he remains deeply popular with parts of the electorate. The fact that Malaysia continues to ask the question of whether or not Najib will receive a pardon, and this is something that is highly politicized, speaks to the challenges that it, and the difficulties that, of a system that is where corruption is caught up so deeply in maintaining and securing political power. Najib has alleged that 1MDB's real mastermind was Malaysian financier Lo Tek Jo, better known as Jo Lo. Lo, who has also denied any wrongdoing, has been at large since 2016 and is considered one of the most wanted white-collar fugitives in the world. While several other key figures have been prosecuted, disputes remain with Goldman Sachs, which helped 1MDB arrange its bond offerings. The bank was investigated by the US Department of Justice for violating America's Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. In 2020, Goldman reached a deal for a 3.9 billion US dollar combined settlement with Malaysia. But the current government has said it wants to renegotiate the deal, prompting the bank to sue. Meanwhile, Malaysia's government is still paying back 1MDB's debts. The cost of corruption is not only a political cost where a party loses power, it's also for ordinary Malaysians who have to endure the, um, 
the costs of the excesses of corruption by having to pay out of their tax dollars instead of things and benefits for them, they have to pay the debts of the company. Over the years, the debt, including principal and interest, has swelled to 53 and a half billion ringgit as of March 2023. Malaysia still had 9.7 billion ringgit left to pay. So how did 1MDB affect Malaysian politics? So there's been a culture and practices of norms of uh, you scratch my back, I scratch yours in, uh, in, the, in the political economy that is, you know, has been going on for decades. Corruption in Malaysia didn't start with 1MDB, but the sheer scale of the scandal was a turning point. Najib's party, the United Malays National Organization, or UMNO, was ousted in 2018 for the first time since Malaysia's independence. His one-time mentor, former Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad, came back to power on a pledge to clean up politics once and for all. We are not seeking revenge. What we want to do is to restore the rule of law. But observers say that few structural changes have materialized. One of the biggest concerns why corruption is a bit uh, prevalent in Malaysia is because political parties need to have funding for the elections, which is also why 1MDB happened in the first place. In other words, Najib needed a war chest for his election campaign. But up to now, the bill for political financing act has not yet been tabled, or at least has not yet been passed in parliament. Observers say that reforms have been stymied by the COVID-19 pandemic and sustained political instability. The fragmented nature of Malaysian politics has meant that there hasn't been consistency, there hasn't been the political will, there hasn't been the um, uh, significant attention to meaningful attention to cleaning up the system. In the 2022 general election, voters continued to demand change. The current Prime Minister, Anwar Ibrahim, was elected on promises to bring about reforms. But the administration was recently criticised when corruption charges against Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, with whom Anwar shares power in a coalition government, were abruptly dropped late in his trial. The decision sparked intense debate about whether accountability had been sacrificed in favour of politics. Yang terbaru kita dapat lihat uh, dalam isu dakwaan kepada timbalan Perdana Menteri pada hari ini iaitu Datuk Ahmad Zahid Hamidi yang telah di, uh, dilepaskan dakwaan tanpa pembebasan ataupun sikatan dia DNAA uh, yang dibebaskan dengan cara gaib, tangan gaib, cara pintu belakang. I'm less optimistic uh, than I would have been five years ago or even uh, a few years ago from the perspective of anti-corruption reform. I think uh, the withdrawal of the Zahid charges really has created a lot of cynicism. And so, especially when you know charges are, are pulled away um, and withdrawn, the impact of that means that uh, it sends a message that these things are not as important. In 2022, Malaysia scored 47 out of 100 on international watchdog group Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index, reversing five years of progress. But UMNO's fall has also had broader consequences. The mainstreaming of ethno-nationalist, religious and populist narratives in Malaysian politics. Due to the realisation this among the Malay ground that the 1MDB scandal was Probably like the final straw in showing that the, the UMNO elites hasn't really uh, used their power and resources to uplift the Malays. With elections becoming more competitive, most of these voters have switched to right-wing parties under the opposition Perikatan Nasional Coalition, which is now the second largest coalition in government. These include the religiously conservative Malaysian Islamic Party, or PAS, and Bersatu, which champions a Malay nationalist ethos. 
Periktata Nasional has promised clean and stable government and to create jobs. But it has also been accused of employing racial rhetoric, hate speech and disinformation. What not to be left out is that they have capitalized on the critical role and the issue of managing insecurity. Uh, so by feeding populist agendas, by portraying themselves as the, the warrior, the stable agent, they have been quite successful um, in this regard. Observers say that the window for the government to make meaningful reforms may be narrowing. Because if you have the bulk of the Malays who are not going to support his administration, then I think Malaysia will just further go down the road of polarizing identity politics, which you see in many other countries. And that definitely will make the governance of reforms a lot harder. Still, hope for change endures. Saya percaya pada negara saya, saya masih sayang sistem keadilan saya dan saya nakkan perubahan. 